Okay, the problem with uh, giving a title in the beginning is always by the end you try to justify the title. So I, uh, though I thought of this title when I was when I sent my uh, sort of abstract for this talk. Of course, there are a lot of places where I feel that uh, we did cover, we did figure out a lot of milestones in the process. Uh, but again, I think uh, in the process that I'm going to share now uh, with this project I did uh, in started in December last year, uh, which was around the idea of the refugee crisis that was happening, of course, a lot in Syria, but across the world, everywhere. So. Uh, I'll start with, I've actually made my slide in the chronology in which actually I did my classes. So it actually goes in the same way in which the whole pattern of the last three or four months that the classes went through. Uh, that also gave me a lot of simplicity to just keep a track of, you know, just giving more coherence to the presentation. Uh, so I thought I'll start with the process because this is precisely what, uh, sorry about that, it's a viewpoint. So Viewpoints is this actually theater making technique by Anne Bogart. And uh, she lays out very interesting three-step process of a question, an anchor, and a structure towards making a performance. And uh, I thought it was an interesting process to take in and not actually make a play out of it, but to see how that process itself can be used in a classroom. So the three steps is the question, the anchor, and the structure. The structure being actually the performance which you would eventually make uh, with the children. Uh, just in the beginning, I would just like to share that structure is something which was uh, kept in the last and at the same time was given very little time in terms of the focus was more on the question actually and on the anchor and the structure came very much in the end, uh, but in a, in a, in a very actual rehearsal process when you're making play with adults, you would actually give the same amount of time even to the structure, uh, as much as our equal amount of time to all the three, or more actually to the structure when you're making it. Uh, but I think, I realized that actually we were not focusing so much on the structure, we focused a lot on the question first and that by the end we realized that actually we didn't start off to make a performance, but in the end it became a performance. So I thought uh, I'll share this step by step of how we went through each of these processes and what we sort of discovered in this process. Uh, so the starting point was actually uh, a theater exercise that I did where this is flow pattern exercise where I asked the children to just actually make any pattern that comes to their mind on the floor. And as they were making the pattern, I said to sort of now give it a shape. So you have a beginning, middle, and end to the pattern as you're making it. And I told them to practice it a couple of times so that they remember it. And then the, each of them had to come and present the pattern. And as they were presenting, they could either share the images that they saw that they were making, or they could share even a story that came to their mind, whatever they felt uh, while they were doing that exercise. And one child came up with this idea that he actually just made two circles. This is the outer circle, and this is the inner circle. And he said the outer circle is actually people, which is powerful people, God, etc., this and that. And the inner circle is people who actually don't know where to go. Uh, they are actually clueless. So where is this inner circle actually aspiring to go to the outer circle? And this actually led to a discussion on the refugee crisis because interestingly in the history class, they were discussing the refugee crisis. So that's when I felt at least in the process that how the academic subject was actually feeding into the making of uh, in the classroom. And very often, we do see academic and extracurricular as two separate things. Uh, and as much as I feel uh, as a theater practitioner that academia may plays a very important role in making theater, uh, and so it does even in teaching theater in the classrooms. Uh, and that's where I felt was, where there was a very interesting breakthrough that happened where they were speaking a lot from whatever they were discussing and learning from the history class. And that's where I felt that we could now take this exercise, which is just a very simple theater exercise, 
just started just to make the session more interactive, more playful, and that led to a theme which came out of this. So uh, as we were talking, the first thing actually we started talking about was what is this refugee crisis? I mean, why should we be interested in the crisis, first of all? And we started talking about how we understand the refugee crisis through so much of images. There are so many images that are generated every day on the internet, on the news channel, in the articles, and all of that. And uh, interestingly, I had heard from someone that when the World Trade Center bombing happened, the Fox TV had this the classic image of you know, the plane going and the tower falling. And that image was repeated so many times that people thought this was the World Trade Center bombing. Uh, but there was a group which actually went out and said, we saw something different. We didn't see this. For us, there was also things that were happening on the ground. So they had their images also. And there was a group in America which actually went out and put out those images also and said, you know, this is just the media's idea of the World Trade Center. But is that the only thing? There were people helping people out. There were so many other images. So why not that? Uh, and as we were discussing this, we realized, OK, is there manipulation happening through images of the crisis also? Uh, and they got some interesting articles and stuff. And as we started reading about it, we felt that, yes, there is some manipulation, but we don't know exactly what is that. Uh, it's not just because, oh, we feel it's manipulated. So can we go deeper into this? Can we sort of inquire more about what this, what is media really doing in today's time? Uh, so these arrow marks are just some of the inferences from those sessions. So basically, why should we be interested in this? This is the biggest question we ask. And why should we be interested in this? Is it just because it's a world crisis? What, what is our connection to this crisis? How are we, in one sense, connected to it? Are we or are we not? Uh, so now I'll come to actually the first step where I said that, should I go into starting making theater exercises and let's say, you know, let's start making a performance from the beginning? Or should I actually engage them with a question which can really grip them for the rest of the sessions, you know? Which can really make us interested in this uh, theme also. So I started asking them very simple questions because they all said that, you know, let's make a play, let's make a play on this. So I said, OK, so let's now start looking at some of the questions. What do you want to say through this? What should the audience feel after watching a performance? Questioning assumptions. Syrian crisis or Chennai floods. Now, this was an interesting uh, thing that happened with the child in the class. So I told the child, uh, so this child said, you know, I, I think the people are becoming very ignorant. People don't care about the refugees. I said, why should they care? I asked, why should they care? So no, our parents should care. They are not caring. They're just going to work. They come home. They watch TV. I said, but aren't they supposed to work? Aren't they supposed to run the house? Aren't they supposed to pay your fees? And how do we assume that they don't care? Isn't that an assumption that you think that they don't care because they don't speak to you about it? And then I asked him that, OK, Chennai floods just recently happened. If you had a cousin brother who was stuck in Chennai, and if you had this option of going to Syria and helping the refugees there, what would you do? So this child said, I'll go to Chennai. I'll go and help my brother who is in problem in Chennai. So I said, then, what is this? Do we need to have a personal impact to be able to discuss or engage with something or talk about it? Or are we just talking about it? Even if you're talking about it, what are we talking about it? So uh, this, is, this is sort of few of the questions that we came out of this session that uh, we want to show that we don't really feel the impact of things outside our small world. What, how does media shape our worldview? Again, here we were just still trying to find what do we want to do with this. We are, we are not arrived at any sort of finality. We are just still discussing, negating, and finding our way through this. Uh, I'm just going. Uh, step by step. Of course, there was a lot of discussion that happened in that over a couple of cl classes. But I thought the next step was to get into anchors of how, if we have this question of, is media shaping our worldview? Is media doing this to us? What could be our sources of research? What could we like go and find more about this? So there were news articles, there were videos, there were photos, there were social media uh, groups and posts. And then there was an interview, which I'll come to later in my slide. 
And when the children got this material, there was a lot of material that they got. Uh, these are some of the things that actually again came out of the discussion of that material. Uh, so can we say media is always telling or finding stories? Do we always need stories to understand tragedies? Now, there's this interesting example I want to share where there were like five, six articles that they got. And when we read all the articles, there was a pattern in the article. It would start with the journey and then it would end on a happy note. And then we saw that a lot of articles had this idea of ending on a happy note, ending on a happy note, ending on a, we found a new home in Germany, we found a new home in London, we are now settled, we are very happy. So the children actually questioned that uh, maybe this looks like a story that they've made out of this. So I said, okay, so do we need, do we need to make a story? Do we need to find a narrative to tell this? And that was one of the things that we discussed in the classroom and said, are we also actually doing this? Are we now making this theme? And now we are saying, you know, now let's make a play out of this. Is this also a shortcut? By we're saying, okay, we found an interesting thing, now let's make a play. Everyone will be very excited about this. And are we doing the same thing that the media is doing? And it was a very charged up session because almost we all started feeling, uh, I wouldn't say moral or ethical. Yes, somewhere it is, but we almost started feeling very responsible of what we were going into. It just wasn't a classroom which discusses refugee crisis because it's the in thing, because it's a world event, so let's talk about it. And that, this I think was a very interesting breakthrough for me as a teacher when I felt, yes, now I think we have also somewhere found a personal question. We're just not finding a political question, but we're also finding some personal questions to this. Uh, so I went ahead and I said, no, let's do a writing exercise. Uh, so I gave these two exercises to them. And uh, from this exercise also what came out was they all got so influenced by the news articles that they almost started writing the same kind of stories. So the writing exercises came to me, I read it and I said, but this just looks like same like the news articles. Why are we interested in it? And you're talking of names like John, and there were names like Carrie. I said, do we know these people? Who's John? Who's Carrie? I mean, do we know they live in Syria? Do we know they live in Iraq? What are these? Alex. What is Alex? Who's Alex? What is this world are we? What world are we really pre presenting? And they said, but the child said, Alex is the name of the carrot. But I said that as you go deeper, if you're writing about this boy from Iraq, would his name be Alex? I mean, it's a question to be asked. It's not that his name can't be Alex. And that's when I, as a teacher in the classroom, felt that it was also important to not start getting representative about them. It's not start becoming that, oh, we know their world so well, so now we'll write a story, keeping ourselves in their place and see how they feel. Uh, of course you can, but I thought somewhere we were not ready to go into that. And I had to... Somewhere the writing exercise actually failed, to be very frank. It failed because it went into the, the, the regular tropes and cliches of writing these events and stories out of such events. Uh, so I did this exercise of just making groups and ask them, just tell yourself when you felt like a refugee. When did you feel like a refugee? You don't have to really go through the crisis. And just three responses that I've just put on my slide, if you can read it. <sighs> so when this happened, uh, again, frankly speaking, this session didn't lead to anything, except the fat, fact that, of course, uh, they expressed their idea of refugee, but we were still stuck. We were still stuck with the same old question that how do we go forward? I mean, all this is good. We have made an exercise. We tried these things. Now, how do we go forward? Uh, and once I was talking to the children and uh, a lot of my classes happened, uh, which were full of discussions. Uh, and that has happened. This is a new discovery for me because usually we would be working on floor, doing some work, working with the body, working with 
uh, making images and stuff. And this time, I actually did a lot of talking with them, just discussion, just talking, and constantly stimulating them with new ideas and seeing, okay, how they respond and take that and again challenge their idea. And that was becoming very, very, very interesting in the classroom because I could see that 22 children could actually be engaged by purely talking. You don't have to do like you know you don't have to do many things in the classroom to engage them if you have if you have an interesting question if you have an interesting food for thought in the classroom they will be engaged uh, and that's what i found at least uh, through this process and then we then we were discussing in the class i don't know how do we like do do go ahead with this so this discussion started that you know aren't the words repeated in all these articles are some of the words being repeated in most of these articles. And we said, let's make a list of all the words that are getting repeated. So we made like a word bank. I have not been able to put all the words, but most of it. And that we found were sort of found in all the articles. And we said, what are the common words? What are the common words? Let's make a word bank out of it. And then we discussed the idea of images and words. So I said, what, what comes to your mind the moment you say ISIS? Because I see gun and death. Uh, what comes to mind when you see UNHRC? Oh, I see tent. So how their world was also so much shaped by the images and words coming back to the first discussion we had. And then we said, let's do this. You all now write a fictional story. You don't need to name the character. You can just make it I. You don't need to name the character. don't need to name the place. Let's just see if you can use all these, any of these, you can use these words in your story, a fictional story, and now you actually make an account of a refugee using these words. What happens? And when they came up with this, the exercise that came up after this, uh, where we all felt that now that all the stories start looking similar, is that giving us a clue that when we read the media articles, because the words are getting repeated, when we read the media articles, are we able to differentiate a person from Iraq? Are we able to differentiate a person from Syria? Of course, you are able to differentiate in the sense that when they talk about their journeys. But has it become this mass churning out of information where it's just, oh, refugees? Oh, there is someone from Iraq, there is someone from Syria, there is someone from Greece. And is it becoming too generic? Is it just becoming this idea of telling the same thing through different people and then you're all lost in this whole idea of how to understand this crisis? Uh, that is what we took forward and then we said, let's look into what, what else is happening around the refugees. And we found that there was this World Refugee Day that is being celebrated since 1950s, actually, uh, on 20th June, every year. And uh, when I went to the website and saw, there were some interesting initiatives that happen on World Refugee Day. But there were also things like, they call celebrities like Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. And then they go and they pose with the refugees and then they give some part. And that's, it's like a one-day event made out of the refugees. And then all the refugees are very happy, smiling, and then it's put on the website. So I said, maybe it's interesting. We should question this also. Great. There's some good work happening on that day. But shall we start questioning why do we celebrate days itself? So the children said, oh, yeah, actually, why do we celebrate Independence Day? So I said, actually, frankly speaking, I don't do much on Independence Day. The only thing I do is maybe I watch the film Gandhi, which comes on the TV. So what else am I also doing? Uh, I mean, just to get into the idea of how there are so many days that we have in the calendar here. And what do these days mean? What, is, what does this tell us about our society? And somewhere I could see that the children were finding certain personal questions through this. They were able to raise not just, oh, there is a refugee crisis, oh, but how does this connect to my world also, of my society, of where I am living, of my context? Uh, a question came also that, are we engaging with things very superficially? It's just, it's become a theme and we engage with it and then it's done, we forget about it. And that's where an interesting breakthrough again happened, where a very good friend, and I knew that she was working with uh, refugees in camps in Syria. Uh, and I suddenly realized that I should write to her and she should speak to the children, actually, because she goes to the camp every month. 
she works on the field with them and we did a Skype interview with her in the classroom and it was very interesting that the children actually for the first time saw oh there is someone real who's actually working on the field and it's very interesting because children feel oh do you think that lady really goes to the camps and there's a lady who looks different she her English is different and all of that not for the factor of it being different but they at least I've we all of us in the classroom felt that we had a tangible access to someone there on the field and this is uh, this was a very important part of my class uh, where I think the larger political scenario of how the oil is driving a lot of these wars because a lot of children feel ISIS okay ISIS is the bad one but there is a, there's a lot of you know dynamics behind it there's a state which is at work there is a huge politics going on around this and Nimam actually spoke about it and to my surprise children actually got a lot of it of how oil was one of the major reasons for these fights uh, but we didn't go into too much detail of it but we still at least managed to get a new perspective on the crisis uh, some of the influences that we had from that talk definitely I would say from that day they felt this is not just a classroom this is not just a theatre class where we are doing refugee crisis they felt that today we have spoken to someone who actually goes onto the field, risks their lives and I thought they all got very, very, they had a certain ownership to the whole project uh, and I think it's very interesting because even when you make a play, your actors over a period of time, you see how they find ownership of the play themselves and I could see that this was still not making a play, it was still in the classroom, it was still about a class but I could see some of the things happening exactly the way it would happen in a playmaking process just that here we were not really working towards a performance we didn't know at least that we will make a performance out of it um, as part of the anchor itself we sort of thought let's let's put ourselves in their shoes and think what would they be thinking when they see all these things so this is again by the children, like the children came up with these questions and thought how about we also look into these questions, can these questions also become a point of inquiry as we go forward. Now we come to the structures, uh, this was actually just the last one month, uh, not even one month actually the last 15 just 16 days that we said now we need to put this work out what is the best way should we like there are many ways we can just share what we have done to the teachers uh, we can maybe make a PPT out of it or maybe there are many ways to do it and I thought if we have reached so far let's give it a try to even make a performance out of it let's see if we can make some interesting sketches out of it and as we were talking they felt that this question of is media shaping our world, is media making all the stories sound very similar they said if we take the element of the World Refugee Day let's take a situation where it's World Refugee Day what is happening across the world on that day and I said what are the possible places where you think World Refugee Day could be celebrated and it just came like as if there was this rush in them to just share where, whatever they felt, the ideas that came in their mind Oh, what if cartoon channels talk all about refugees only? What if TV channels and media is only talking about refugees all day? What if musicians are making music about refugees on World Refugee Day? What if classroom schools are talking today is World Refugee Day? We'll do a theme on refugees. So every subject is around refugees. Now I know that in one sense they were excited and they were like feeling, you know, all this is possible. This is maddening because it's absurd to think that all this will go on that day. These all these things will be around the idea of refugees. But I thought there was, there was a clue there and the clue was that we were finding some structures. I would say the idea of classroom school was hint to a structure of what could be that structure, what could that structure of a classroom lead us to? Can we make it dramatically interesting? The same thing, the same idea but can we make it dramatically interesting? So from here on, we purely started working using improvisation tools in theatre we just said okay it's a classroom structure it's a world refuge day what do you think would happen and they just went on floor they tried some ideas we went we tweaked it we made them write the text 
and they came up with all the scripts were written by them in the process and we made four sketches eventually the first sketch was in a in a school uh where they are celebrating world refugee day and how the irony of the thing of how it becomes so monotonous by the end that the next day when the teacher comes and the teacher says you know we have done the world refugee day homework we have done chart work we've done this the teacher says we don't need it today world refugee day is over and they were finding a lot of meaning and they're finding it very playful to do this because i think it was their world it was their world that they were representing and that was very important that they understood this also from their world uh, and not by an imposition to make it into a very serious play because it is about refugee crisis um uh, the second sketch was about uh <coughs> about a, a, a group of uh, a tv channel which is today's that day's world refugee day, and the tv channel is trying to make a small program around the lives of four refugees so there was a filmmaker there was a cameraman there was a director and then they had arranged these four refugees played by children who would come and they had given them the script you're supposed to say this and then they would say it and then they would shoot it and then there would be technical problems that would happen so the idea of manipulation that we saw in the first part of how that happens we were able to actually physically put that in a performance uh and that was all coming from them uh, of course rehearsed facilitated by the teachers from outside but still i thought all the ideas came from them the third was about uh just it was just a small uh sketch about the radio channel and the tv channels and how people sort of listen to the radio channel tv channel continuously so it was we took one news piece and we told the five students to say the same news piece in different languages so it got very monotonous by the end because they kept on saying the same thing the same thing in between there would be ads and again there would be the news and there was someone who was watching a tv there was someone who was listening to the radio in the car and that experience was put again through the idea of media and the last was in a restaurant where there is a live music band uh playing music and people have come to the restaurant they are eating and suddenly the musicians say you know today is world refugee day and we are going to play this song the memory of the refugees we request you to not eat while we are playing this and of course it was a dramatic thing we did that as they start playing people start eating and then they stop and then there is this whole discussion with the musicians telling them can't you like wait can you like control your hunger for a few seconds and the people question them what do you what do you what do you achieve by playing a song like you think you have played a song and done some great thing for the refugees and the musicians say that you know oh no but we at least have the right intent so it was not again making it one sided but bringing both the points that what is this person in the restaurant also feeling about this music just because it's world refugee day and how the musician feels that he's doing a great thing by playing this song on the day uh so these were the four sketches that we did uh the other possibilities that we spoke about was you know let's make a video and let's do this appeal to people to donate to the crisis uh let's do a fundraiser let's do a contest who can donate most and when this happened there's a girl who pointed out that if people start donating to win prize then they won't necessarily engage with it. this is again a counter and that's and that was interesting that all these things came out in the classroom uh and all these things were again countered and we found different ways of going forward uh these are some of the things that we just I think by the end when you when you get into structure it's all repetition. You have to constantly repeat the idea of improvisation, we're constantly repeating things, we are rehearsing so that by the end the performance is sort of uh in a very presented in a very professional way to the audience. Uh so I do think that the structure was structure does eventually play a very major role but i thought in this process what i wanted to what i discovered was that it took the last priority and something else took a bigger priority and i thought that could be a way forward for at least for me going forward in the next year and could be an interesting method even for some other subjects where there might be already a certain milestone that you have to reach but can we in the process start defining break down into smaller questions and see how by the end we reach to the end very organically 
and not with a certain force or with a certain idea that, oh, we have to achieve this by the end. So I thought breaking down each thing into these three processes was uh, was something which I hadn't done before. That's one. And second, I felt it brought in a certain way of teaching a subject. I still feel that though we were working in a theater classroom, it was still a subject that I was teaching them. It was still a theme that I was dealing with. Uh, just some photographs. This is Nimam Ghafuri who came down all the way to watch the performance. Uh, some photographs of the performance. Uh, this is not part of this process. There was a separate thing we did with the space where we did an art installation. And children actually converted a room into an abandoned home of a refugee family. So this was done by children of grade six, uh, where we also worked for three, three and a half months. And uh, this had a different process, where we were looking at the refugee crisis purely from the idea of material, space, visuals, and all of that. Some of the people I couldn't have done without. Thank you.